a decade ago, over a decade ago, when I first started talking about colorism, people weren't using featurism and texturism as separate terms. And so I was including them in the umbrella of colorism. But now that we have more nuanced vocabulary, I am, you know, making those their, their distinct things. And so even amongst dark skinned people, if you have thinner features or if you have a straighter hair texture, then you have a form of privilege. You have some advantage over darker skinned people who also have Afro textured hair or who also have wide noses or full lips, right? And featureism, anytime you hear those isms, right, it is a hierarchy. And so people have stigmatized wider noses and and really thick lips, right? And I know people are saying, oh, but you know, you have white people getting injections to make their lips fuller, right? But there's a difference even in the artificially plumped up lips of a white woman, for example, and the naturally full, the naturally thick lips of that many black people have. And so it's, again, these hierarchies are not just personal preferences or just superficial beauty standards. There are stigmas and there is concrete, tangible discrimination and sometimes violence perpetuated against these people because their features and their body types and their various types of identities are stigmatized and marginalized and scapegoated, right? In order to project or advance the agenda of oppressive regimes. And then when we talk about texturism and hair, that intersection, I've in the past talked about <laughs> different definitions for texturism and hairism. And I think this is very helpful. I don't think it has caught on necessarily, but I hope it does catch on at some point. But I think we should distinguish between texturism and hairism. And so the definitions I propose are one, texturism is the hierarchy of based on the actual curl pattern, right? Based on the density and the degree of curliness or coiliness that you have to your hair, right? So the actual texture of your natural hair, the way it grows from your scalp, right? That's texturism. And I think it's also useful to have hairism as a different related category that includes texturism, but I think hairism can also include not just the texture of the hair, but also the style of the hair, right? The hairstyle. And so we see people being discriminated and marginalized and um, ostracized because of their hair texture, but we also see that happening because of the hairstyles. And so traditionally black hairstyles, hairstyles that come from, that are born from black culture, like cornrows, like locks, like bantu knots, like afros, like afro puffs, right? These types of hairstyles, regardless of the texture, are also stigmatized. So even if you have, let's say, 2A hair as a black person, your hair is not afro textured, but you wear it in braids, or you wear it in bantu knots, right? You still might face some level of discrimination because the cultural identity that that hairstyle represents is a stigmatized culture, right? Black culture. And so even if you have 4C hair or type 4 hair, for example, a hair texture like mine, if I were to straighten it, it would be less stigmatized, right? It's the same texture. My hair is the same texture even if I straighten it, but people will see it as more acceptable. It will be seen as more valued or valid in society if I straighten it, right? But because I choose the style of an Afro, I will experience more discrimination than if I took my same hair texture and wore it straight, okay? So I think that's an important distinction in terms of the intersections of colorism. 